जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण I want to pay my obeisances to my spiritual master, Sri Mat Jagat Guru Subhashan Acharya Ji Maharaj. I want to pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Ramanuj. I want to pay my obeisances to Mother Lakshmi, and I want to pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Mat Narayan. I want to welcome all of you to our Sunday satsang at the Sri Subhashan Goshala, Sri Narayan Dham, Durban. South Africa. I want to welcome those of you that are watching this discourse on live feed, locally, nationally, and internationally. And I want to welcome in advance those of you that are going to be watching this discourse in the various groups that it has that it will be posted into subsequently. I want to start off with a topic that has been in the minds of humans since time immemorial, and that is how does the soul enter the material world? How? Does the soul enter the material world? Before going into the uh, into the topic itself, a brief description of the soul. The soul is described as one ten thousand the trip of the hair. One ten thousand part. Of that ten thousand parts that you divided the trip of your hair and divide it by another ten thousand, and then if you take one part of that, that would be one ten thousandth the trip, the size of the trip of your hair, and that is the size of the soul. So if you go through the Bhagavad Gita. Lord Sri Krishna describes the soul in relation to the elements as follows. He states that the soul cannot be withered by the wind. The soul cannot be burned by fire. The soul cannot be drowned by Water, and the soul cannot be annihilated by any weapon. When he say weapon, he means the earth, because all weapons are made of ingredients from the earth itself. Metal is found in the earth. However, he does not use the fifth element or the very first element, space. So let us examine this. Lord Sri Krishna states that the soul cannot be withered for the very reason that the material universe is filled up with space, and the soul need to travel and live in the space that has been created by the supreme personality of Godhead for its subsistence. In the material atmosphere, so the size of the soul is subatomic. All the elements are more dense than the size of the soul. I want you to try and imagine this, like different size of particles, like marbles. Okay, so you get all marbles the size of soccer balls 
placed in a huge box and then you get a soul the size of a marble. When you drop the marble through all of these soccer balls, what will happen to the marble? Okay, let's imagine this room. This room is full, stacked with soccer balls. And you take a marble and you drop it from the top. What will happen to the marble? Can these soccer balls obstruct the movement of the marble from top to the bottom? Why? Because of the subtleness of the marble relative to the grossness of the soccer ball. Are you understanding? The subtleness of the marble relative to the grossness of the soccer balls, the marble can permeate in between the soccer balls. So if you take all of those soccer balls and you imagine them to be atoms in fire, can you imagine? If we heat all of these balls, these soccer balls, and you throw the marble through it, will it permeate? When the balls are hot, will the marble permeate? Yes. If you move these balls around, will the marble permeate? And if you put these balls in water, will the marble permeate? It is for this reason Why did you change the setting? It is for this reason that water cannot drown the soul. It is for this reason that fire cannot burn the soul. It is for this reason that the earth, through weapons, cannot annihilate the soul. And it is through this reason that wind cannot wither the soul. Are you understanding graphically what I have stated? The size of the soul relative to the size of the atoms that are found in the material elements. The soul is so subtle that nothing can harm it, nothing can damage it. Do you understand? And it floats through space as per its destiny and it reaches its destination. And destiny is measured in its karmic reactions. Destiny is measured in its karmic reaction. So now we have an understanding of what the soul is, the size of the soul and the quality of the soul. The quality of the soul is that it is eternal. No material elements can cause any damage to the soul. No material element can, it, can cause any damage to the soul due to its subtle nature. Then the soul itself has qualities. What does quality mean? What does quality mean? What are the qualities of fire? Heat and light. The quality of fire is heat and light. You cannot remove the quality. You cannot remove the quality of which it is emanating from, can you? Because if you remove the quality, if there is no heat, if there is no light, then there is no fire. So the quality and the entity has to exist or coexist eternally. Similarly, the soul has for its, for its quality consciousness. It has for its quality consciousness. The soul is 
individual. The soul is individual and in its immaculate state of absolute purity, all the souls will experience the same super consciousness. All of the souls will experience the same super consciousness. The soul in its purest form, the soul in its purest form, together with all the other souls, will experience the same consciousness or super consciousness. The soul is also independent. What does independent mean? God has given each soul minute independence. Independence and consciousness means what? If you are conscious and if you are independent, what will happen? There will be movement. If you have independence and if you have consciousness, then in view of your independence, you will have movement. The quality of the soul through the attribute of consciousness Attribute of consciousness. What does attribute of mean? Same as quality. It is a inherent part of the soul. Has two qualities. The attribute of consciousness has two qualities. Innate qualities. What does innate mean? Inherent, within, inseparable of hate and desire. Of hate and desire. So these two innate qualities is found in the attribute of consciousness of the soul. The soul has two types of consciousness, attribute of consciousness which deals with the outside and the substantive consciousness which deals with the inside. So if the souls are like in a bunch of grapes, all enjoin one consciousness by virtue of it being connected by the stems as one and we'll imagine that those stems to be super consciousness as soon as this innate quality of hatred and desire starts dominating the superconscious position of the soul, the soul drops from the bunch. The soul drops from this bunch in view of its innate quality of hatred and desire. Another innate quality is pleasure and so the soul, the minute it comes out of its neutral position of super conscious bliss, it falls away from that position in the punch. So God has created 
an atmosphere for that soul to fall into. God has created an atmosphere so that when that soul leaves the bunch, it has a place to go to. And that atmosphere is called the material world. So originally the soul will be within that atmosphere of consciousness, then through desire and hatred, it loses its place in that super consciousness and it drops down into the material atmosphere. And God has created this material atmosphere specifically for those souls who start exhibiting from a state of absolute bliss, symptoms of hatred and desire. Symptoms of hatred and desire. So why would God place these souls in the material atmosphere? Why would God place those souls in the material atmosphere? They have the wrong qualities. All the souls have these qualities, Siddha, but those that want to experience these qualities. God creates the material atmosphere. Okay. South Africa is a huge land. Okay. And if the current president give us a few hundred thousand hectares and they say, Acharya Ji, take this land and call it Acharya Dham. Okay? So we will look in this new country now called Acharya Dham. Okay? So it's a vacant piece of land. It has trees, rivers, mountains, everything. But now we have to put a societal structure into this vacant country now called Acharya Dham. All right. What societal structures will we for formulate? So we will formulate a constitution and we will formulate ordinances on how to live each of us in this country. All right. We will also build will have a police department to make sure that whoever in this country does not follow the procedures will go through a process of judgment and in lieu of the process of judgment we will create lodgings, what these people call prison. Is the prison made for a particular person or persons? No. The prison is made for a particular type of behavior that any individual can go through. So when the Supreme Personality of God had created the material universe, He created it for those souls that's going to be exhibiting hatred and desire not particularly for Boya and Shalem. He just made it. If Boya, Shalem, Venita Beni, if you transgressed, then there is a law which is absolute, there is a judgment system which is absolute, and there is a residence for you which is 
absolute. And there is a time frame for you to leave this residence as well, which is absolute. Because the Supreme Personality of Godhead is absolute. All of you understand? So, simultaneously, and I want you to try and understand, I am talking about this one segment of creation that I am currently living in. This segment of creation, 155 trillion years has already passed. It's in midpoint. Another 155 trillion years has to pass. And this creation will be over. I am talking relative to the creation that I have been born into. This creation happens eternally. There is no first date for this creation. And there will never be a last date for this creation. Because this creation emanates from a zone where there is no time. And time is invested in this creation, specifically for this creation itself. So it may be very, very difficult for people to understand when I say there was no beginning and there will be no end. Eternal means it was always there. Because you live in a situation where you see everything has a beginning, and everything has an end, does not mean that this is the only dimension. This dimension was created for souls that exhibit desire and hatred. So this atmosphere was specifically designed for you to get as far as possible into ignorance. For you to get as deep as possible in ignorance because you had an opportunity when you were in super consciousness to decide in view of your minute independence whether you wanted to remain in bliss or experience your desire and hatred. So if you love desire and hatred What type of ingredients would God create for you to experience yourself in the material universe? Desire and hatred. Because you loved it. Didn't you? Yes. And God will give you what you one, because you have independence, either to be with him or to be away from him. And through this attribute of consciousness, desire and hatred was modified, the modifications of this attribute of consciousness is desire and hatred it modified on your consciousness. So far, we all clear. So God also had to create an engineer. An engineer to give you perfect conditions. To give you perfect conditions in terms of your desire and hatred, pleasure and pain in this universe and for that purposes he created Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma is the secondary creator within these universes. Lord Brahma is the secondary creator.
creator within this universe is and it is his duty to inject into this atmosphere or compute into this atmosphere for you to experience to your optimum desire, hatred, pleasure, pain. Desire, hatred, pleasure, and pain. So Vasan, can you blame or anyone in this universe blame God for the miseries that they are going through? Kavita? David? It was your desire to live in this atmosphere. You ex exhibited through your consciousness a will to extricate yourself from the super consciousness in which you were blissfully living or being. You made this choice. And as per your choice, God created a menu for you. God created a menu. Alright? Let us see how we how palatable this menu is. Alright? So Lord Brahma computed within this universe as an ingredient a vice called lust he created within this atmosphere an ingredient called lust where are you heard of the word lust now let us see what is lust. What is lust? What is the opposite of lust? Sivana? Love. The opposite of lust is love. And let us see why God would do such a wonderful thing. Why would God do such a wonderful thing. When you are in total absolute bliss, who are you in love with? God. When you are in total absolute bliss, you are in love with the Supreme Personality of God. Now you want to experience desire, hatred, pleasure and pain. So what would God turn that love into? Lust. That same pure love that is your substantive consciousness. Energy cannot be destroyed. It can be converted so that energy of your substantive consciousness, which is pure love, which gives you the state of bliss by virtue of being in love with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, that energy is now converted to the opposite. To the opposite. And that which you experience, because you, who wanted to experience? you. So God has converted love into lust. Lust takes place in all of your senses, in all of your senses. Lust takes its residence in all of your senses. How many senses you have? Name the five senses. Sight, 
Sight. Sound. Sight. So when lust enters your sight, what happens? You see, Madeva, when you are driving with your wife, Radha Rani, Ramanu Dasi, and you stop at a robo, and there's people crossing that robo, and if there is a girl wearing a mini skirt, <laughs> where will your sight go to? <laughs> what impel the organ that you call your eye to gravitate towards that mini skirt? It is that inherent quality of lust. So the quality of desire and hatred is a innate quality of the soul, but it can only be experienced. It originates where? When it is connected to a material body. When it is inherent, it is there in a subtle form. But when God provides you with a material body, when the soul is surrounded with a material body, then that lust originates itself through the five senses. So the origination of desire and hatred, you need an instrument. Otherwise, it is in its subtle form. And that instrument is the human body. Which body? The human body. Okay? When, through sound, you phone one of these agencies, so then you know which agency I'm talking about. <laughs> and you hear through sound provocative lustful descriptions what happens to yourself? Eh? <laughs> Impelled by the lustful suggestions through sound the lust which is resident in your hearing faculty through sound is activated and then Jalen, it activates other faculties in your body. <laughs> the impulsion is lust. The impulsion is lust. You understand? And similarly lust invades your entire being. Right? Lust is not a synonym for sexual desire. Lust is not a synonym for sexual desire. Lust is you want something. It is the opposite of love. When you are in love, you are content with whatever is there. And when you have lust, you want an abundance of it. So, if you want money, then you are lusting for money. And this lust turns into what we call greed. This lust converts itself to greed. When this lust cannot be satiated, 
What happens? You get angry. So from this last emanates anger. From anger emanates greed. From anger emanates greed. From greed, when you cannot fulfill that desire, comes hatred. Can you see? Lust, anger, greed, jealousy, envy, prejudice. Can you see that line? And all this comes from lust. And this lust was injected into the material atmosphere by whom? Lord? Lord. So you can see everything in this material universe has been well thought of, well planned and executed to perfection. There is no need to be chaotic in this universe. That chaos is through chaos of ignorance. That chaos is chaos through ignorance. There is absolutely no reason to live in this universe and be mystified. Because this universe was created by the perfect being for the imperfect situation of the imperfect being. for the imperfect being to become perfect. <coughs> Are we confusing? This universe was created by the perfect being for the imperfect being to become perfect. So through billions and zillions of lifetimes, until you do not remove your veil of ignorance which has been purposefully and deliberately given to you as a quota as per your karmic actions through various lifetimes if you do not remove this veil of ignorance then you will continue in Ignorance. You will continue to live in ignorance. So who created this material universe? Can any creation take place by itself? If you take all the parts of a Mercedes Benz and place it there, and come back after 10 years. Will the parts have formed itself into a car? If you come after 1 million years, will the parts would have formed into a car? If you come under 155 trillion years, will the parts would have formed itself into a car? That is the logic we have on in this universe, isn't it? For this, we do not need any special intelligence. Through our own experiences, if you take a bag of cement, a truckload of sand, and a truckload of stones, and a truckload of bricks, can these ingredients, which is the essential ingredient for building a house formulate itself and build a house. So will it ever be possible for chemicals to formulate itself and become a universe? If these small simple things 
if you put two small simple things, it cannot attach itself to each other. Nishima Deva, if you took your semen and kept it in a test tube next to your bedside and said, I want a child, I want a child, I want a child, I want a child, will that semen have transferred itself into the womb of Radha Rani for her to be conceiving a child? So if this simple thing couldn't have happened, then how can a complex universe be formulated? How can a complex universe become formulated if a simple thing like having through willing your semen to be injected in your wife cannot happen? Do you understand? So for every creation, there has to be a creator. And for the ultimate creation, there has to be the ultimate creator. And the ultimate creator cannot be created. Because he is ultimate and absolute. You understand, all of you? So this universe is complex. It is complex in a million ways. Before you even go to the complexities of this universe, go into yourself. Ask yourself, how do you see? Ask yourself, how do the photons of light that enters through your pupil gives you sight? Ask yourself, how do you hear? What happens to the sound waves when it enters your auditory canal? Ask yourself, what happens to the air that you take in? How many parts of it enters your lungs? What is the function of your lungs? What is the function of your heart? What is the function of your kidney? What is the function of your lymphatic gland? What is the function of your spine? And what is the function of the fluid in the spine? What is the function of the 101 arteries that you have in your body? Before going outside, go. Go inside. Go inside. Find out all of these things first. And also ask yourself, whilst you investigating yourself, how are you standing? How do you sleep? What makes you stand? What makes you sit? What makes you lie down? Ask yourself. Ask yourself, what is keeping the heart in its place? What is keeping the brain in its place? What is distributing? Who is that manager inside your stomach? That is saying inside to the food and outside to the other food. Who is that manager in your stomach? Who is that manager in your stomach that is telling the water to go into the body and who is that manager that's telling that water to go out of your body? Who is that manager in your body, in your stomach that's crushing the food by the right temperature because there's fire in your stomach that's on 24 hours a day that is redistributing all the nutrients that you take throughout your body. Who is managing this kitchen? So before you go and worry about someone else's kitchen, 
get into your own kitchen first. You understand? Why isn't, why has chemicals stopped replicating if they replicated in the first place? Ms. Hiramani. That Ms. Hiramani. Okay? That should be your next, when you're going back to university? Tomorrow. I want an answer by when? Uh, Tuesday too, too early, right? Next week, Sunday, I want to know that that chemical that mixed by chance, nucleic acid, okay, why is it not mixing by chance anymore? Because scientists, if you tell them there is a God, then they'll ask you who created God, I'm a spiritual scientist, I'm asking you, if there was a chemical reaction, why isn't the chemical reaction taking place anymore? Why isn't there any more replication? From unicellular into multicellular. Right. And see if you can find out at which point it is possible for a unicellular cell to replicate into a multicellular. You know? The guru is confused. Okay? But if I bring the theory of God in, the theory of reason in, the theory of logic in, everything makes sense. And when you understand, for those of you that have assimilated this discourse, this is a transcendental discourse, what it means. Transcendental means I am repeating. I am repeating through sound that which has come to me through sound, which is called struti. And Struti is the only evidence that should be accepted absolutely as per Vedic injunction. So for those of you that assimilated this transcendental discourse, you will find a sense of release. You will find a sense of relief. And in that relief you will find a space called peace. A space called peace. Because you have been tied. Your heart has been tied into a knot. The knot of ignorance. The knot of ignorance. And the Guru, through transcendental knowledge, I slowly loosen that knot. Right? See me? You went, aha, uh -huh. you can feel there's a movement. Because the knot on your heart, which was tied with ignorance, has now loosened substantially so that you can attain that feeling called peace. And I want to explain to you. Knowledge is an attribute of the soul. Knowledge is a quality of the soul. Knowledge is not the soul itself, but a quality of the soul. Knowledge is a quality of the soul, like light is the quality of the sun. If the sun does not emit light, can the sun be seen? So it has to emit light as a quality to be seen. 
Do you understand? The sun cannot be light itself and has light as a quality. Otherwise, it cannot be seen. Is it logical? Similarly, the soul cannot be knowledge and at the same time be the soul. Because it has to learn about itself through its own quality. And its quality is knowledge. So when it learns through knowledge about itself, which is its own quality, then it rests in supreme bliss. So knowledge is a quality of the soul through which it can be seen. Light, light is the quality of the sun through which the sun can be seen. Okay, we'll conclude.